Hi, welcome back to Off the Reef, our second show, um, which is showcasing the Aquatop Reef uh, 3Q. This is our two-week update of the tank. Uh, we're going to kind of take you through where we're at now, how things have been going. Uh, we're going to go over some of the testing kits that we're using and the parameters that we're shooting for. So, as you can see, we definitely have some more life going on in the tank. Uh, we've added, uh, in addition to our two clowns, our Black Ocelaris and our Da Vinci, which we weren't sure about last time. Was it Picasso? Was it Da Vinci? Because um, when we picked it up from the store, some guy had brought him in and that's what it was. So we did some more researching and we are confirmed Da Vinci. We've added um, a Zoa Rock that has a few different types of Zoas on it. We have some uh, Indonesian Sharp uh, Pallies in there. Uh, just some other random pallies that we're working on identifying because when they had it, they were like, meh, we don't know what they are. Um, from last time, our Recordia, um, another set of Zoas over here, some radioactives. We have some Rastas right there in the middle. Hopefully we get those going. Um, our Favia, I think, was in there last time. And our Green Torch. So we certainly have some SPS and one um, little LPS here. And then uh, our our softies that we're going with. Unfortunately, uh, one of our Zoa uh, rocks over here hasn't quite made it, and that one might be um, set for a funeral at the end of the video. So, but the uh, still overall very happy with the reef cube that we got from River City Aquatics. The water parameters have stayed really solid. We're going to kind of go over some of the kits that we use. So the first thing is when we're doing these saltwater tanks is uh, we've got to make sure our salinity is good or your specific gravity. And what we're using is a refractometer that um, we picked up from uh, River City. I can't stress enough that this is what you need to use. The hydrometers and all those things, the little float arms, not as accurate as a refractometer like this. They're simple to use, a couple drops of salt water, um, wait about 20 seconds. Make sure that you're zeroed, uh, you're uh, calibrated, look in the light. You're aiming for, uh, I mean, some people is 1.023 to 1.026. I think right now we're right around 1.024, which um, we're okay with. Some more water changes, we'll probably bump that up to 1.025 and kind of float in that range. But again, refractometer, can't stress enough that you need to have one of these. About 20 bucks to 40 bucks, depending on where you get it but overall, worth the investment. Leave that right there. Uh, the next uh, piece of equipment that we have, we have several pieces from Hanna, and these are like the standard for reef keeping. This is our pH checker. Right now, our pH is right around 7.8. You know, it fluctuates from day to night. Hopefully, we're gonna get that up a little bit. We'll watch it throughout the day and see where our, um, our pH ends up being. But this is amazing. Drop in the tank, hit your button, test it, you're good to go. Awesome piece of equipment. The, uh, the next one that we have is our calcium checker. So these from hand to get a little more involved. Uh, we're not going to go into all the steps to it because there's just too many. But I have to say for the numbers that you get and the accuracy, these from Hannah are amazing. Uh, this is our calcium checker. Last time we checked, calcium was 457. We're looking for a target about 450, so boom, we're right where we want to be. Our next one is our phosphates. Uh, you want to keep these low. Hmm, can't tell you. Um, very important to keep your phosphates low, especially when you're starting to add corals and stuff like that. Uh, right now, from this checker, our phosphate, uh, I think, was 0.02 last time, if I'm not mistaken. So right on the money. Some people want ultra low. I'm going to call that low, ultra low. Uh, it's not bad for some of the corals to use that phosphate, but 0.02, I'm happy with that. All right, our next um, tester that we have from Hannah is the uh, alkalinity checker. Um, alkalinity is important in our tank for uh, our corals, and uh, this one is measures the DKH of it, and I think our DKH was right at 8. We want it between 8 and 12. So... Um, can we raise our alkalinity? Absolutely, and we probably will start working on that one. Again, with some water changes and stuff like that, uh, that's where we're going to be. So, uh, alkalinity. Another set of testing equipment that we use, we use the API test kits, and uh, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, thought process out there, like API is not good, it's not accurate. 
Um, we could have gone with something like Red Sea or something like that, which we're going to use for our magnesium, which we haven't started testing yet because we're so new. We're still doing constant water changes. And uh, so your magnesium, you're going to want about 1350, 1300 to 1350. Uh, so once that Red Sea test kit comes in, we'll, we'll definitely have those numbers for you. But we're using the APIs for testing our ammonia, uh, our nitrites, and our nitrates, which are, are very important to make sure that you, you have zeros in the tank. You want your these to be zero. Uh, and the reason is ammonia is really irritant to the fish, their gills. Okay, as it passes over their gills, it irritates the tissue. It can actually cause hemorrhaging, uh, which is not good. It'll kill your fish. So in order of severity, ammonia is bad. The next thing that we have is our uh, nitrite, um, which while not as toxic as ammonia, is certainly toxic to the fish. And as that passes through and it absorbs into their body, um, it turns the hemoglobin into methoglobin, methoglobin. Can't really pronounce that word. And what it does is it doesn't allow the transfer of oxygen to cross the tissue like it's supposed to, and that can kill your fish as well. Uh, the third is the nitrate. Uh, again, that is the, the lowest of the three. Still not good for your fish. While it's not going to kill them outright, um, high levels of uh, nitrates can cause your fish to become sluggish. They may not eat. Um, eventually, it can kill them. It can cause lots of problems in your tank. Algae love to eat nitrates, so you want to keep that super low if you can um, to avoid any problems in the tank. We have a few problems in the tank right now, okay? Um, our nitrites are, are, are off, they're good. Our uh, ammonia is good. I think we're having a little bit of a nitrate issue here. Um, and our algae is starting to like it a little bit. So we're going to start working on bringing that down. Um, we're going to probably reduce our light cycles a little bit to start seeing if we can knock that down a little bit. We do add a little bit more cleanup crew to this tank. I think that will help knock down some of our algae problems. But we can't rely on that alone. So we have to do um, the right thing is good husbandry, uh, making sure we're reducing our light cycle and watching the feeding of the fish. So that's where we are right now. We're happy with, with the way things are going. Um, watch for our next video, and uh, we'll see you next time off the reef. That's close, my heart. Say a few words. It would really mean a lot to the passing and to the remaining who lost their friend. If, uh, if you guys could subscribe down below and like the video, I think Mike's doing an awesome job uh, with the videos. I think uh, I think it's going to be a great series. So subscribe so you can uh, can be part of it. Hopefully none of this happens anymore. Yeah, it's really hard to take it out of there. But uh, thanks for watching our videos. We'll see you uh, on the next Off the Reef.